Hey guys, welcome back to Driven Channel, and I'm very excited today because we're gonna learn how to get leads. You know, like if uh, if you have a business, what's the most important part? Uh, obviously, people are gonna say sales, but you can't make a lot of sales if you don't have a lot of leads. Mm -hmm. You get twenty five thousand leads a day. On a good day, it's twenty to twenty five thousand. Yeah. And that's not all just for like one vertical. That's not all just for mortgage or business loans. Yeah. You know, that's across the board. Right? Yeah. So tax settlement, we probably do nine, ten thousand. Be before we jump into that though, yeah, yeah. Your, your your Zachary, is it Zachary or Sack? What, Zach, what, what, you can call me Zach. Yeah, Zachary Ramirez. So are you Latino or where are you from? I'm a Latino, yeah. Yeah, I'm from Whittier. From Whittier. Are you background like Mexican or Yeah, yeah, I'm half Mexican and half white, so I'm I'm a mutt. Got it, got it. That's why you have like kind of like the red, the red hair. A that's bit. what it is. Yeah, that's what. It is. That's yeah. exactly why. Yeah, yeah. So, so let's start with with your background story. So, so, Sack, or you said you said either or, right? Yeah, whatever. Yeah. But they call you the Call King. Yeah, the Call King. So, the, yeah. let's promote the Call King. So, how did you get started into um, all this business stuff? And and before that, like when you were growing up, where'd you grow up? How was your uh, childhood? Did you grow up with money or, or business uh, mentors? Were your parents in business? How did you yeah. get started? Yeah, so um, I didn't really have any real business mentors or anybody around me that had run a successful business. I didn't grow up poor, but I certainly didn't grow up rich. I grew up yeah. probably you know middle class, normal, yeah. you know, good, good life. I don't have no, right. compl no complaints about that. Um, grew up in Whittier, and um, you know I was a knucklehead, man. You know I uh, I I was always sharp in a lot of ways and then just got, managed to get myself in a lot of trouble. You know, I graduated high school a couple of years early when I was 16 and uh, went to college at that time. And I didn't know what the hell I wanted to do, bro. I was just all over the place. Yeah. Um, and I just, you know, started getting into, you know, trying to figure out what I wanted to do. Stumbled into sales when I was 18 and uh, I faked my way into a loan modification company. Hmm. I pretended I had all this experience. I was fucking 18, dude. Like, what experience could I have had? Was yeah. this in 2008? This was 2007. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's 2008. Yeah, 2007. Yeah, yeah. That's when, so the mar when the market crashed. Basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't, but the thing is, you know, I was 18. I didn't know anything about any of that stuff, you know? And uh, I was by far the worst salesperson on that floor by a significant margin. It wasn't even close. Why do you say that? I was all, I didn't close. I don't remember closing a single deal in the three, four months I was there. Did I, you have any, were you, were you single back then? Yeah. Yeah. Did, yeah. You, did you get laid a lot? I had some fun. So you must've had some sales in you. You know, I, I, I definitely knew how to sell a little bit, but I, over the phone, face to face, I didn't know, a, I didn't have a process. I, I had no sales skills. Yeah. Maybe I had a little bit of natural aptitude for it, but. I could not sell so. Yeah, you know? I, I know the secret how to fix that though. Oh yeah, tell me. Well, I mean, it, you just got to be you. Like you got to be, you got to be. I say a lot. I say this a lot. You got to be a kid again. What I mean by that is, when you're a kid, you know, you you have your your mom, mm -hmm. and you're like, you don't ask permission for milk. You're just like, give me that titty, give me that titty, <laughs> and 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 the and the and the babies, the the kids, they get what they want. So what happens is when we go through like school elementary and then you know some of us get pimples we go through puberty our our voice is changing we build insecurities teachers tell us we're not good enough family members tell us we're never going to be somebody and we build all these insecurities with our body changing and stuff like that mm -hmm. so i i believe that people lose their uh kidneys meaning they're they're just throwing themselves take it yeah that, that, like, that like assertiveness courage yeah so I, I believe that happened. So the, the way that I fixed mine was like in high school when I when I barely got my diploma mailed to me because I couldn't graduate on stage because my grades were so bad. Uh -huh. They mailed me my diploma. I had a 1.8 GPA. And then I say, well, I'm going to go to college, but I'm going to fix everything that I don't like. And I went to college just because my parents got me a car if I went to college. So I, I got a red Honda Civic Coupe. Had to do that. It reminded me of a Ferrari uh, because it's red <laughs> Honda Civic Coupe. And it was a salvage Civic. And I, I went to college and I said, well, I'm going to fix everything I don't like about myself. So I started working out, taking creatine, body uh, body gain, bo body gainers, or what is it? Uh, mass gainers. Mass gainers. Started taking the mass gainer shake. And I I gained some muscle. And then I just, then I needed a tan. Then then I, I they told me, because I had pimples when I, was, when I was in high school. 
And they said, if you go to the sun and burn your face and then swim in the salt water, your skin's going to get better. So I said, okay, well, I'm going to go try it. I did that. And then, so I fixed everything. So then I, I even had long hair with like, with like highlights. <laughs> so, so I was, uh, I was like I this guy. I like that. Yeah, I was like this. Cause I, I used to watch the novelas, like the Mexican novelas. Uh -huh. And you're like, I'm going to be fucking all suave. Yeah. But, but because I used to like all these chicks and in, in the novelas, like the Mexican novelas have all these hot chicks. I gotta look like that guy. Yeah. And, and then I, I would see the guys that they liked. So I'm like, dude, I'm going to be like a novella guy. So I did that, but then I was still shy and insecure about stuff. Mm. So me and my buddy Felipe, we used to be so broke because we we're college kids. Yep. And he would get 20 bucks from his dad. I would get 20 bucks from my dad. And then we would combine it to make it 40. Mm -hmm. And we'd go to Costco. He had a Costco membership and we'd get the big absolute vodka bottle. <laughs> and, and that lasted for like a week because it was like big and fat. It yeah, was yeah, like yeah. 1.75 liters. So we would, uh, we would put it in water bottles, go to the beach. And, and we had like, we were in shape, uh, but we didn't have that confidence. So that uh, absolute vodka, <laughs> we would mix it with like Coke, uh, uh, Gatorade, whatever. Yeah. Put some on it. And then after like two, three, we would forget uh, about our insecurities <laughs> or shyness. And then we would go and approach the, the girls. That liquid courage, baby. I, I remember like he's, he's like telling me, hey, it's your turn. Go, go talk to those girls. Oh. Some, some, I remember these Portuguese girls. Mm -hmm. uh, they were from Portugal. Yeah. Uh, Portugal. And, and they were hot, man. Like they were like exotic. And we're like, man, you, you go. And he's like, no, you go. And then I'm like, you, you go. So the little absolute uh, splash mm -hmm. in, inside it's that got, uh, Gatorade made it happen. I went in there and bam. We connected, then we ended up hooking up with them, and and you know the rest was history. But then <laughs> you do it enough that you become uh, accustomed to it, and yes. that's the same thing. I, the same way that I did when I couldn't I couldn't go on the live. Mm -hmm. I was scared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And some people say liquid courage is bad. I say li liquid courage is good if it makes you money and gets you laid. Well, and, and, and like and like you said. Once you've been in that environment a bunch of times, you know, Brian Tracy says success breeds success. Once yeah. you close that first deal in sales, yeah. th you gain a little something, a little 10% yeah. better, 5% yeah. better. Yeah. Same thing like, so what I did when I was in high school is I read that book, um, The Game, yeah. right? The Game and I read all that stuff, all the pickup artist shit. And uh, I did that because I was, you know, kind of shy around girls I read and stuff that too. too. And so I went, yeah, it, it's a good book for, I think, for young men, you know? And so it kind of taught me to little comfort zones to go in and talk to girls. And dude, I made rules for myself. I'd be like, okay, I'm going to go to the mall and I'm going to try to approach 20 girls today. Yeah. And the I, mall used to, the mall used to be like my spot. Now it's like dead, yeah. but you know, yeah. Well, plus now it's like in a different position in life. Well, too. now you have social media, you have Instagram. Yeah. That, yeah. Well, if I ever have to go fishing again, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, <laughs> but uh, what are like, what are like the top three things you learn in sales from the book, the game? Um, one, have a process, right? Because it's, when you become a truly great salesperson, you could get on the phone and kind of wing it, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of best salespeople don't have a script, but they wing it. But you have to start it the same way at the beginning, the absolute helped you, kind of like your training wheels, you know? Yeah. Well, having a process is for sure, like he has that whole like step-by-step, step, first we do this, then that, then that. I don't even remember it at this point because it's just like internal. Yeah. But having that process can help give you the initial confidence you need, right? Is, and in sales too, I teach all my, I've trained hundreds of salespeople and the same way, I, uh, I have them go through a specific step-by-step -step process and if they skip a step, dude, I'm freaking stopping them and I'm role playing it with them and practicing until they don't fuck it up. Yeah. Cause I want them to practice things the right way. You know, I, I'm a drummer, right? And when you become a good musician, you practice as perfectly as possible, right? And the reason you do that is because once you're actually in the heat of the moment, you want that muscle memory to come out and you want to play as close to perfect as possible. So long story short, um, one of the things I gained from that book was by following a process, it can help give you that confidence and uh, a proven system to follow. I'm sure yeah. you have systems you probably teach your salespeople as well. Yeah, I mean, processes and strategies, uh are everything and then there's another thing intention like you have to be clear on your intention you have to have intentions be intentional mm -hmm. because like one of my things my favorite things that i got from that book was the how, how what you do when you go to the club 
So when you go to the club, like if you're if you're watching this and you're single, you want to get laid by the hottest tens, uh, like you go to the club, and the first thing that I would do with my buddy is we would go to the bar. So we would go to the bar. The second best is the bathrooms, but that's kind of like, it's kind of a little weird when you're <laughs> waiting outside of the bathrooms because you know the bathrooms, the girls come out and, and the girls go into the bathrooms. But my, the, my, my favorite one that's more like professional way is just going to the bar. So we would go straight to the bar mm -hmm. and then the bar, you don't want to face the bartender. So if, because if you face the bartender, you're mm. giving your back to the hot tens that are coming in. Because what do girls want at, at the club? They want to get a drink. Mm -hmm. So when, when you're facing the bartender, you have your back against like mm. the girls that are approaching you. So what you do, what, what, I, what I learned from that book, my biggest uh, takeaway was you want to face out of the bar. Mm. So you want to give your back to the bartender and you want to give your face to the girls that are coming uh, to the bar. So they're approaching Be you. Yeah, they're approaching you. So reverse psychology, when, when you talk to a girl that's approaching you, you already have the upper hand mm -hmm. because without them even knowing, they're coming to you and, and then they're smiling sometimes. Mm -hmm. So they look at you, they make eye contact, they're coming to the bar, so it's a trap. They're smiling at you and then you kind of give them a little wink and, and you're like, you already have the upper hand. It's marketing. So, so what's step number two? So step number two is like, you, you open up a conversation and you offer them something for free. This is all sales here, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'm not using it for, don't, don't use it, uh, take advantage of it and, and use it for bad reasons. Like mm -hmm. use it uh, for sales. But so, you know, the customer, the girl's coming towards you, she's smiling, you, you give a little wink and you offer something for free. So what I used to do and my buddy, we used to offer them a drink for free. Mm -hmm. So I used to be, my, and, I, and you have to give them a reason that they can resist. Because if, you, if you're like a weirdo and you're telling a girl, hey, I'm going to get you a drink for free, drink it, then it, she's probably going to say no. But how do you get her to say yes? I, I used to say that it was my birthday every day. So I would go out seven <laughs> times a week. Every day it was my birthday. So the girls were coming to me, right? And sometimes like super hot tense. And I would tell the girl, hey, it's my birthday. We're going to have a, 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 we're going to celebrate with a shot. Um, would you like one? And they would be like, yes, yes, let's take a shot, your birthday. Yeah. They take a shot 90% of the time because you talk to them and you ask them questions about themselves. You give them compliments. It, that, that's another book, How to Win and Influence Friends. Mm -hmm. And they would feel good, happy. And then you gotta also build a rapport. Yeah. So like when you're building rapport, like let's say you're wearing some Nike. Say, you know what, I used to wear those, those Nike Air Forces. I used to wear those like, all the time, I would always have a fresh pair, man. Hey, nice, nice, uh, nice uh, Nike, Nikes. And you're gonna be like, yeah, man, you know what? And we'll start talking about Nikes. But the girls, you know, sometimes they, they could have a top. Maybe it's a Dodgers. It says Dodgers. You start talking about Dot Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like, how'd you know that, that, that I was a fan? And they're like, a fan of what? And you just start making up shit, like the Dodgers. And you start conversations, and it leads to the second shot. And then later, when you start seeing the girls, uh, giving you some some body language, you know, mm -hmm. when they start, start playing with their hair and all and that kind of stuff, like you become an expert. You're like, this is going to be an easy lay for tonight. <laughs> but but you know, it all starts by by the way you approach when you go to the club. You want to go to the bar and you want to face out, not face your back to the girls that are approaching you. Yeah. So in sales, that's all sales. Like so that's why I tell people, hey, were you good at getting girls? And they're like, yes, I was really good at, at getting girls. So I'm like, so why can't you sell? And so that, that I think that when you're good in sales, you can close anything in life. You, you could get whatever you want, yep. but then what you do that I want you to talk about right now is being good in sales, you're only gonna be as good as to how many people you get in front of you, mm -hmm. right? So when you start getting more leads, when you start marketing and, and, and getting more exposure, now you're able to close more transactions because you're gonna get more leads. Mm -hmm. So how did that begin? Like, how, how did you say, well, you know what? Because you, you, you actually told me this. Tell me. I, was, I, had a, I had businesses, I was making sales, I was making money, mm -hmm. but then shit, I make more money now selling leads. Mm -hmm. So that's because I always say marketing comes before sales because yep. you could be good in sales, but if nobody knows you, nobody pays you. So now you're making it easy for other business owners to close more deals, make more money because you're providing th these leads. So how did that all come about? 
yeah. and what got into this business that you have that you're generating 20 to 25,000 leads a day. Like that's crazy. Yeah. And and you know it didn't it didn't start off like that, right? I didn't intentionally choose to be a marketer. In fact, I was just a sales guy. I, yeah. I was a great salesperson. I still am. And um, I just had a couple little marketing tricks that I had. And I built my business loan company, my original one, US Capital. I built that off of email marketing. That was the one trick I knew. Well, email marketing got a lot more difficult in 2017, 2018, 2019. Google updated some algorithms, whatever. And so when I stopped being able to produce profits with email, then I had to start looking at other channels. We ended up building a call center. We tried text message. We tried Google. We tried Facebook ads. TikTok wasn't really big then. And so we tried all these different things. And um, over the next three, four years, um, we ended up learning about probably six or seven different types of marketing, you know, digital, call center, AI, all different types of crazy stuff. And then we started getting really fucking good at it. Yeah. In fact, we started getting great at it. I was getting numbers that people were just, you know, asking to buy my company from me, asking to, you know, buy exclusive deals and things like that. And I started kind of thinking about it. And I was like, I'm not a business loan guy anymore. I'm a marketer. And I started selling. First, I had a, I had 200 sales agents and we were just I was flooding them. They couldn't even handle all the calls. And so I set up a overflow. So I started selling the, the extra leads basically to my competitors. I started looking at the numbers and I was making more profit off of that than I was off of my entire 200 salespeople, you know? And it just got to the point where I was like, what the fuck am I doing? Like, what the fuck am I doing? Why am I even running calls to these salespeople, going through all this extra energy and effort when I can just sell the calls to a competitor, let them handle all the headache, and I just live a better life and make more money yeah. with less work? It's just ridiculous. So, um, so that's what I did. And uh, I started off, uh, I was selling leads in business loans, moved into tax settlement um, that just had a, had a couple big shops that, that knew what they were doing. And then I became their biggest uh, you know, marketing company, ended up onboarding about eight other tax companies as clients, and then uh, had somebody approach me asking if I could do debt settlement leads. I said, I can figure it out. Ended up doing that. Um, then someone approached me, hey, can you do plumbing and roofing leads? Never tried it. Let's give it a shot. And then I had somebody approach me, hey, I have a, I'm a lawyer and I have a, yeah. a practice. So all these leads that you get, how do you determine how much you sell the leads for, especially when they're different industries? Like if it's a lead for this industry, it's this amount. If it's a lead for this industry, it's less or more. Like, Or are all the leads the same price? How, how do you... So what I usually do is if I'm starting in a new industry, especially one that I'm not really that familiar with, yeah. is I'll usually partner with one bigger company at first. Um, like this is what I did with debt. I partnered with one bigger company and I said, look, get me a retainer, you know, 10 grand, 20 grand, whatever, and I'll build out all this for you. I'll build out call center, I'll build out pay-per-click, websites, funnels, cold email, everything. I'll build out the whole thing for you. And then we measure which one's working. And then I just kind of offer them a menu. And I go, okay, after I spend 10, 20 grand, I know what's gonna work. And I go, hey, so check it out. So here's all the different types of leads. These ones converted better for you. This is where the money's at. And uh, I recommend we pursue this one and I can sell you the leads for this much. And as long as I'm making a good margin and they're killing it, then let's go. I'll scale it to as big as they wanna go. You know, my biggest debt company takes 7,000 calls a day. You know, and they have they have like over 300 reps and they're just they're just going. <laughs> they're crazy. Now, the, the leads. How do you get the leads? So we have a, we have about 400 websites, about 350 websites of all different types where we run all types of ads, all different types of traffic. And we get the leads to opt in. So they fill out a form. Yeah, I'm interested in tax settlement. Yeah, I'm interested in business loans, whatever they're interested in. Right. Once I have those forms, we have about 22 million people that have filled out forms on our websites over the past six years. And so now I have legal permission to contact those people using any method I want. I could call them with artificial intelligence, which we do a heavy amount of. I could reach out to them with email, text message, ringless voicemail, press one, telemarketing. Um, I could rerun at retarget them and run ads to them again. And I do all the above. How does AI uh, voice calling work? Oh, it's badass. It's the new thing, man. It's it's the freaking it's sliced bread. 
it um, it calls you. It's a fraction of the price of a telemarketer. It calls you. you e even even the oh, the the ones that are not from here. The yeah, yeah. I, I, I have a of my. I have two hundred telemarketers right now. I have about. 80 in Mexico and about 100 in the Philippines and then 20, I think, Honduras. And um, and so, but yeah, even if you're paying them, you know, three, four, five, six bucks an hour or whatever, um, the AI is just, it's a fraction. Is it's, AI good? It's better. It's better than humans. Yeah. Hmm. The only reason I have the humans is because some of my clients will only take live voice transfers. They just had a bad experience with AI because you know, AI is a new technology, right? So nobody really... There's nobody that really has it. Down. So how does the AI work? It basically you you load a list into it. So let's say I loaded a list. Let's say let's say it was going to be mortgage, right? Um, you load a list of homeowners in it that have consented for you to call them on one of your forms, and when you call them, you just uh, the AI sounds like a person. You know, it uses realistic technology that makes it sound. It'll go, hey, is this Jim? And you go, yeah, this is Jim. Yeah, hey, Jim, um, I got your uh, address here, and uh, I wanted to see if you guys wanted to refinance your mortgage with ABC Company. Would you be interested in something like that? And, dude, it, it reference it sounds like a human. You know, it's pretty legit. Can it can it record, like, can it record Albert? Like, can I talk to, can it record me having a conversation and yeah, then, like, and then it mimics my voice? Yeah, it, we do that regularly. In fact, one of the things that somebody... Can it close like, like Albert? So I've... I've been trying for a long time to get it to close deals and take credit card payments. It's, I, it's really difficult. Yeah. It's really hard to get yeah. it to that level. So it, that's, that's 2025. That's what's happening. But we're not quite there yet. <laughs> but right now it's good at generating leads. So it basically calls you, goes, okay, let's say it's a debt settlement, right? It goes, okay, great. Hey, um, we help alleviate people's debt. Do you need help with that? You do? Okay, great. Uh, do you owe at least $15,000 of credit card debt? Cool. And we actually plugged it into a, um, a software that allows it to do a credit check. So it'll actually, the AI itself will do a credit check on them in real time and go, okay, so you say you're over 15,000. Do I have your permission to do a soft credit check to verify that debt amount? Great. Okay. I can see here you do owe about 17,000. Looks great. I'm going to go ahead and transfer you to one of our settlement officers. Okay. Hang on. Moves it over. Imagine getting that fucking lead. You're going to close that shit, you know, especially you. Yeah, no, that's good. I, I didn't even know about AI calling. It's dope. It's new. It's brand new. Nobody has it. So do you think that pretty soon you'll get rid of your sales reps or no? I think as people start adopting the technology, as people get comfortable with it, because right now people think the AI, they immediately assume spammy. They immediately assume a lot of negative things, which is kind of sucks because it's a really great technology. Um, but people have misconceptions about it. And um, if they try it, I mean... You know, I mean, dude, we're doing millions of dollars a month of revenue off of, well, not for me, but for my clients, off of just the AI live transfers. It's probably one of our biggest verticals, or one of our biggest channels. So it's, uh, it's kind of a shame, you know? I really want to get everybody over on that. So I could have an, an AI uh, person uh, calling for leads for, like, my events? I can set it up in a week. I can set it up in a week. I can have it use your voice. Yeah, I can have it answer the rebuttals in whatever exact words you want it to answer every time consistently. I could have it, I could even have it when, if they're interested, trigger a text message with a payment link. If it was like, hey, great, hey, I sent you a text message, go ahead and fill out so the that's, link So that's the biggest, that's the biggest probably recommendation you'll give me, right? If you're like giving me some, some advice for getting in touch with well, more people? Well, okay, for you, I would probably use the first thing is I've never ran it for, uh, for your type of service, right? Yeah, yeah. So what I'd want to do is I'd want to test every channel. But I could, but but we could we could do it for mortgage, for real estate. That's what I was gonna say. Escorts, yeah, I'd want to test every channel. Yeah. You know, like like uh, I've run solar before pretty successfully. Um, that was three four years ago, so I haven't done it in a while. But yeah, I mean, if you wanted leads for let's say solar, mortgage, whatever, a lot of them, a lot of times it's the same pool of people too, right? I have people that opt in on one of our sites that are, you know, they opted on the site because they're a homeowner who's looking for some sort of service, you know? And so I could hit that same list for mortgage, solar, plumbing, uh, roofing, whatever. Yeah. So I probably would, you know, we call them day one and go, hey, do you need a new roof? Cool, yeah. boom, you need, you need some solar panels. Yeah. So, so these leads, uh, the, the people that call from, from, like you said, you have people all over the world, Honduras, Mexico. Mm -hmm. 
uh, why different countries uh, instead of just just having in, in Honduras or Mexico? Uh, redundancy. Redundancy is sometimes you're going to have an issue with one of your centers. Um, I've had in my I have two centers in Mexico and one of them, the power has gone out before and we've had we've lost 40 agents, <laughs> just 40 agents just offline for two hours, three hours, yeah. a whole day. Um, and so as when I was when it was just me in my shop, I didn't really care. You know, I was like, okay, we lose power. We lose that marketing for a little bit, but I have a lot of clients to feed now. So I need to make sure that every day I don't come to them with fucking excuses. I come to them with hot leads ready to close. Who's your biggest client right now? You don't have to say the name, but just think about your biggest client. Yeah. How much, uh, how many leads do you give them for day and, and how much sales do they make in that day? I have my single biggest client. Uh, I do about 7,000 leads a day for them. They're in the tax settlement space. Uh, and they're doing last month, last month, they earned about 1.7 million, 1.7 million off my leads, give or take, right? I have to give the exact numbers. This month, we're already over a million with them. So, and I, I want a rev share with them. So if they win, I win. Do you have that rev share right now? Yeah. 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 That, that's how I, I usually what, try what, to What does your rev share look like? Well, I don't want to get into specific percentages because I'll probably have people pissed at me. But, <laughs> but um, so but, it's, so it's it's uh, you you kind of have different ones. Yeah, I have different okay. ones, right? I mean, if they're taking volume, 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 it also depends on their closing ratios too, right? Is I have rev shares, you know, that might be a lower percent, but their closers are killers, and they're closing, you know, double the leads. Well, I could take a little bit of a lower percent if they are. The thing is, though, is that everybody says my closers are the best, and I'm like, yeah, everybody, and says I'm that. like, the the data will tell me that. <laughs> the data will tell me if you're correct or not. You know, it's, it's not, I'm not even mad at them. It's just, hey, dude, I'm just going to send you a couple thousand leads yeah. and we'll see. So if somebody here is watching it and they have a business and they're in different industries and they want to work with you, what, what's the best way for them to, like, reach you? Uh, the best way would just be to um, contact me on my Instagram. It's uh, the call king, the call king. I have an automation set up. So if they reach out, you know, I'll be able to kind of respond to them pretty quickly and all that. Besides the, the AI and and the uh, and all the callers that you have mm -hmm. do you use any other source of technology for your for your business yeah yeah we use a lot in fact we're a very tech heavy business we have uh we have three developers on staff and a cto and so um my thing is steve balmer or uh, steve balmer um balmer the, the microsoft guy, yeah whatever the hell's name yeah. is um but they asked him a question i think it was in the, like the early 2000s they were like hey if you can give advice to any entrepreneur, what advice would you give them? And he just said one word over and over again, developers, 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 developers. And what I gathered from that was invest in technology. Yeah. Because you and I, we're very, we're visionaries. You know, we have that in our nature and our blood. And that's why we have to hire operations people, right? To, right. to help us. But developers are like operations people, but they automate it instead. So it's, I would even say it's the next level. Like I, I come to them with these crazy ideas, you know, cause call drive my, my organization, you know, the, the gist of it is we buy calls and we sell calls. So I buy calls from dozens of other marketing companies and I sell calls to, you know, dozens of clients. Yeah. So, um, the technology stack to do that is really important because if something goes wrong, Maybe this guy tries to sell me a thousand calls that day that I sell to these eight eight, eight people, and if it doesn't uh, go smoothly, that guy can lose money. He stops selling me calls. So, whatever. so you know what? Like Lending Tree, do you do you know who they are? Yeah, I know exactly who they are. So Lending Tree, and you know Silo. Yeah, they both do that. Yeah, they they sell uh, like let's say they have a thousand leads, mm -hmm. and they sell those a thousand leads to like I don't know a hundred different people. Yeah. So like, if you do that. If you do that for your business, because you're saying you don't do that, right? I don't. I do exclusively. So if you do that for your business, wouldn't you like 10x your income? So it's it's difficult to say that, right? Because yeah, should, could I make a little bit money if I slice the pie a little bit differently? Probably. The downside of that is I drive live phone calls to people. So it's not like I'm driving web forms. If I, if I drove a, an internet lead to somebody, they fill out a form online, whatever, then I could have it automatically set to send it to three people, let them compete, yeah, whatever. But I'm selling a live phone call. That means I'd have to actually call that dude back and go, hey, you just got off the phone with my customer over here and they're a debt settlement company. 
but let me sell you to another company. I, I just, there's a certain line where I just don't like to cross it. I'd rather offer a premium product, a premium service to premium yeah. clients. You know what I mean? And can I make a little more money? Probably, but I'd rather have a sticky relationship for a long time. Right. So like, what, what other types of uh, technology do you use? So we have, um, we have a data scoring technology um, that basically what it does is we have a list of about 120 million records. We have probably about a third of the people in the United States. I have contact information for them through one way or the other, right? And uh, I paid I paid millions of dollars for data over the past several years. And with that, I'm able to look at all of my deals that are closing and my AI will tell me who who looks like the people that are closing. Yeah. And then from that, it'll say of your 120 million records, you should only be marketing this service to these 10 million people, right? And then I'll do all my marketing towards those people because they're statistically the most likely ones to close. So using AI is not just a, you know, a vision, a dream. It's like fucking useful. It's like useful today, right now. It makes me like hard, hard cash, you know, because my competitors don't do that. And so they, they like, Zach, we're doing the same type of marketing as you, this and that. I'm like, yeah, but I'm just doing shit more gangster than you. You just don't know what you're doing, you know? So that's 90%. Like people who do, people who do their own marketing are fucking idiots. People who do their he, own marketing are fucking idiots. What, why are they idiots? It's, they're idiots because it, there's no way that you can run a super successful mortgage, business loan, this, that. There's no way you could do all those things and spread yourself so thin and also master Google, TikTok, Facebook, uh, call center, email, AI, voicemail, text message, bullshit. Anybody says they could do that is full of shit. You know, you need to partner with a real marketing company who can do real results and who they focus on that every day. Yeah. And then you can focus on what you focus on. Go fucking close business loans, close tax do, settlement. Do, do you get mortgage loans? I mean, mortgage leads? I can for you. <laughs> we should do mortgage leads and real estate leads. Let's do it. hundred percent. It's the same. I have, the, I have the audiences for that. I'd run it on a, you know, I, we figure out a deal where it's a super win win. I take all the risk. Let's do it. Yeah. Cause you have uh, you said you have a list of how many millions? I have about 120 million records. Do you have those people on the CRM with emails and cell phones? I have on about 85 million of it. I have complete data. And what complete data means, I have over 200 data points on them. I could tell you if they're a fishing enthusiast who uh, recently had dental work done and their mortgage is with Aquin Bank. And I, I could I have crazy data on people. I'm a data company. <clears throat> so if you sell can you send an send an email blast and make a lot of money or or what's the yeah. what are the what results do you get through emails right now and and like especially yeah. you yeah so we do a lot of emailing um you know it's it's email is a tricky game because google's intentionally trying to limit our ability to deliver and google hosts about 75 80 percent of people's inboxes everyone has google g suite whatever so i could just do email blasts and i generate a lot of traffic like that um, you know, we have over, I think, 350 different domains. Uh, we probably have 12, 1300 email addresses, and we do a, an enormous amount of cold email, probably to the tune of 10, 20 million a day. Um, so, yeah, we could easily go, hey, let's try this for mortgage, right? We'd have to warm up some domains, get some opt in data. We'd have a lot of work to do, but within a month or two, we could have it pumping. And those leads are awesome. Cold email leads are fucking chef's kiss good, man. Why? Because, so there's, I, I like to say that there's push marketing and pull marketing, kind of like you standing at the bar, facing away from the bar, right? Yeah. Is push marketing is like telemarketing. You called them, they're driving around, they're busy, they're in the middle of something and you've interrupted them and you live transferred them to a closer. You can close a lot of deals like that. You can do a bit, uh, good business like that, but you're gonna have a way better closing ratio on inbound marketing. So if you just leave advertisements out there for them, like email, it's basically an advertisement. When they call in, they, they didn't call in and they're all busy. They called in because they have a little bit of free time. They're mm -hmm. willing to have a conversation right now. So that's why outbound marketing is never gonna have the same closing ratio as inbound, unless you're using it to set an appointment, which, you know, more of a process. Yeah, and, and when you, like, let's say for somebody that's brand new in, in business and they don't have uh, the credibility, 
mm -hmm. and and you get them leads how do they do with the leads versus a business that's established already so it's interesting some of my some of my buyers that have generated the most profits were actually not even big shops you know mm -hmm. i actually had a um a debt settlement shop that only had six guys very small shop and they were closing almost two to three x the ratio hmm. They, don't get me wrong, I couldn't send them that many leads. I could probably yeah. send them a couple hundred a day. But at the end of the day, they were closing 3x the ratio because there's their six people they had were just killers, just absolute killers. And they, um, so sometimes these smaller shops can produce enormous profits. In fact, sometimes when the shop grows too much and they add too many salespeople and they try to scale, that's when all their profits are going out the window. That's when I've lost the most money myself too, is going from, 40 reps and generating hundreds of thousands a month of profit and then going to a hundred reps and making less profit. It, it, you, people think if you grow, it's always going to go bigger, but there's a sweet spot for your business, you know, and I'm sure you've grown too fast and gone, Oh shit. Well, why did I do that? Yeah. I've certainly done the same yeah. and it's not always the best move. Now out of the 20, let's just say 25,000 leads that you get a day, how many of those, like if you rate, rate them from one to 10, mm -hmm. how many of those are like, tens or nines so there's different some channels just naturally have better leads right google leads imagine the good the, the journey we call it a customer journey right imagine the journey of somebody who is looking for uh plumbing yeah right if you call somebody and say hey do you, is your faucet leaking leaking and i live transfer that to somebody and it's, it's kind of a whatever lead right but if they fucking looked on google filled out a form and they're like, hey dude, my toilet is exploding right now. Yeah. There's water everywhere, there's shit yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Well, that's a 10, that's a 10 in terms of a lead. It's a shitty situation, but it's yeah. a good lead. And so um, those, to give you the ratio of the 25,000, I mean, let's say a couple thousand are from specifically pay-per-click, things like that, where it's gonna be a very high intent lead, which means that the odds of closing it are much higher. Uh, so like cold email, pay per click, things like that. Where can you can you explain what 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 a pay per click means yeah, for people that are like yeah absolutely. Because so, we hear it all the time, but what what exactly is a pay per click? Yeah, pay per click is basically you're running advertisements and you're paying a service like Google or Facebook or TikTok or one of those major players. You're paying them for each time they click to visit your website or to visit a form that they can fill out to contact you. Um, so pay per click is gonna be a very profitable channel sometimes because those leads are very high intent. If yeah. they're taking the time to search you out, click on your ad, go to your website and fill out a form, they probably really want your product or service. Whereas if you just telemarket somebody, they might just be dealing with you and being polite because some pushy telemarketer from India is just trying to get them on the phone with somebody. Now, when, when they're gonna go and fill in the, their information, what is your, what is your strategy on the information you want to collect? Do you want to collect uh, more or less? Because like when you collect a lot, when you ask for a lot of information, yeah. sometimes they're like, ah, fuck this shit. I'm not going to fucking put all this stuff. Yeah. But then again, if they do put all that stuff, then that means they're more serious because they put all that stuff. So what is what is your take on that? So I use a, a multi-step approach, right? First of all, everything, testing, testing, testing. You got to test everything relentlessly. Yeah. So sometimes some verticals, I might ask a thousand questions because that's statistically shown to re produce a better uh, cost per closed deal. Yeah. Some, some I just ask for name, phone number. That's it. Let's go. Let's get right to the point. Um, really depends. But at the same time, I like to ask for as little as possible up front to have a low barrier to entry. I want to make it easy for that lead to get through. Yeah. Anything that you do to make your process slower or more difficult is completely retarded. You should never do that. You should never do anything like that, right? You should always be doing things to speed up the process, increase the ratio, make it easier for them, right? Yeah. Your process is the key to it all. Then also when you offer things for free, I notice that you get a lot of people that opt in, but then they're brokies. I don't know if, I, if you know what I mean, but yeah, they'll, 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 they'll sign up for like, oh my God, a free ticket. Let me opt in. Oh, a free, uh, a free uh, webinar. Let me opt in. Yeah. And then those people, you'll get a lot of emails and cell phones, but then those people, they're, they're like homeless people. So that's, that's where somebody like me, I'm able to leverage my database, right? Yeah. I can collect 
you know, a uh, hundred thousand, two hundred thousand opt-ins a week. And then what I'll do with them though is I'll take those, and I won't even call them right away. I'll append them to my database and find out who's not a brokey. Who should I be marketing to? How do you do that? I so I have all the records, right? I have the data on almost everybody who could fill out a form before they fill it out. So, so, when, so when they opt in, you put it into. You, so you when know. they opt in, so what my flow is, I run all these different ads and have different ways to generate traffic to my sites. And when they fill out a form, I have technology that will automatically pull all the data. I have 200 data points on most of these people. So I'll pull out everything on this person. And if they don't even have a credit card, because my data know, knows that, if they don't even have a credit card, I'm not going to call them for debt settlement. Right? Why waste the time? I might offer them a different service, different product, but I'm certainly not going to market to somebody on some shit that I can't sell to them in the first place. So I'm going to screen the hell out of those people right away. So what do you need from the opt-in for you to find out like what they have? Uh, first name and phone number. Huh. Everything else I could find. In fact, even phone number I could usually find. Is this a service that you use or a service that you own? Uh, I own it. We built it. It's proprietary. Yeah. It and took us a long time. And you have to all that information? It. Oh yeah, I and mean, we've paid millions of dollars for data over the past. So you need the full name and the cell phone. I don't even need their full name. In fact, I could probably just do it with their cell phone in, in most cases. If I had their cell phone, I could probably take that and with about 70% of my of cell phone numbers, I can add everything to it. Their email address, if they have cats, their really? home address, everything. If, who they have their mortgage balance with, when they took it out. I could do a lot of shit with these people. Like, you know, like, think about this. People, people like, well, I bring this up to people and sometimes they go, this is, this is bullshit because it's crazy. It sounds crazy, right? Well, I mean, how much information do you think? There, there was a story about a Target. Target did this, right? Yeah. Target has so much information on people. They pay billions of dollars a year for data, right? And they, you just log in with your phone number and then you'll be getting uh, something for your, your wife could be pregnant. And then she starts getting pregnant shit. You haven't even bought any pregnancy stuff. Sometimes they know before you know. Yeah. Right? It's crazy. It's wild the stuff that these people know. But it's just technology. Right? If you have the database, once you have the data, then the only question is, oh, crap, I have this nuclear bomb. How do I use it? How do I use this for the best marketing possible? Yeah. So, like, is, is it true or do you know, like, when they say that the phone is always recording you, so like it when, is, hundred uh, percent. I think you, what was it, Snowden? Snowden, even, even if it's that? even if it's turned yeah. off. Yeah, you know, the NSA is watching you every minute of every day. Every every conversation we're having, watch. We just we guarantee we just activated something right now where our phones are transmitting to some AI in the in the government right so now. So then when, so then when <laughs> I that's why when I open my phone, I'm gonna have like a bunch of. Uh, uh, stuff about yeah leads coming up so you will you will 100 percent yeah i think that we have to opt in for something like that i think that something with the when you sign up for the phone it does that but it, but everybody has to opt in to use it right i don't know exactly how that part works because I, I don't get that deep into data i just i just so your phone's uh video recording you and audio recording you i hope it's not video recording me because god god knows the things it would see yeah i know <laughs> <laughs> So, so it records, it, it records, it, it, like, do you know how, how exact that is? Like, I, I, I don't have that cause I don't, I don't actually use that myself. I just use the, the information I get. Yeah. Um, I don't know how the freaking big companies are doing. Do you the, use chat GPT? Oh yeah. I have many pieces of software that are integrated with chat GPT. Cause, cause check this out. Is it true that your iPhone records you even when it's off, records you video conversations, even what you're thinking? Oh shit. Is it true that your iPhone records your video, records you through video, audio of the things that you're, you're doing even when you don't have your phone on and even what you're thinking? She's fucking lying. Your iPhone has features that can use the camera and microphone. These are only active when you allow them to be. Bullshit. The idea that your phone can record your thoughts is a misconception. Technology hasn't advanced to that level. Privacy and security are major concerns for Apple, and they have strict policies and measures in place to protect user data. <laughs> You're asking your phone if it's recording. It's like it's like asking your girl if she's cheating on you. She's yeah. not gonna fucking say, "Oh yeah." She's gonna go, "No." 
Of course not, babe. It's the same fucking thing with the phone, dude. Yeah. That phone is lying to you, my brother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so like, I mean, I mean, it's it's exciting how many leads you get, but but how do you feel about all the privacy and all and everybody's information being out there? Yeah, yeah. Like if so, like if you want to, like let's say if uh, like let, let let's get into this. So I've been attempted. They have they've attempted to rob me four times. So the first time they they knew I was in New York at a wedding and they broke into my house and they stole my safe and I had a Richard Mule watch and I had like 40K cash and they stole it, but they went straight to the room with the safe and they took it. The second time they, they, they uh, robbed me here downstairs, they studied me, they knew where I was and they knew I was going in through the one of the elevators because there's two elevators they knew i was going in up through one of the elevators no fucking way and and they found me there as i was walking they went through the other side other door and two guys like masked with guns so they pointed a gun here pointed a gun here and they took my watch they took a a patek philippe oh dude a gold the 5890 and and the and the funny thing is that these guys they took the watches and they didn't take the paperwork the box i still have it <laughs> so uh, like I don't know. Um, Good luck selling it then. Yeah, they'll sell it for like a, a fraction of the price for somebody that just doesn't, just wants to like wear it. Yeah. So I don't know. It's stupid. At that point, they should just buy a fake one if they're not going to sell it or make money from it if it's not worth much. Now, the 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 third time they they broke into my, I, mo I moved to a new residence, but they broke into my new residence. Mm -hmm. So how did they find my new residence? Then Then again... Uh, then I had to get security, and 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 then they tried to do it again, but then security got him. The cops came, and then they were they went to jail. I would like to say on the record that I had nothing to do with this. Yeah, just to be clear, because like, I do have some data, yeah. but I, I'm not looking people up. And hey, man, this guy's got a nice yeah, watch. Go to but, his house. but 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 how like how scary is this? And 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 how do you feel about this? Because like even on Google, you just put somebody's phone number. And, oh yeah, and things come up, like. Yeah, it's a trip. It's a trip. The, the world that we live in is between AI and privacy and, and people's information being out there. I mean, think about it. When we were growing up, God knows the things that I said, you know, and if those things were recorded on t uh, right now and able to be played in front of people, I'd be humiliated. Right. I mean, things you say when you're 11, 12, 13, these kids now, they're every their whole life is public. Right. There's no hiding from anything. And same with the data. Right. Um, I don't know, man. It's a scary world that we live in, and um, I feel bad for my kids. You know, they're going to be growing up with this, this crazy. There's some advantages to it, right? Like, oh, cool, better quality of life, this and that. But what about Ryan's world? <laughs> that guy makes like thirty million a year. Yeah, I know that kid's a that 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 is a serious entrepreneur there. You know, what do you start off like opening toys or some shit like that? Or yeah, yeah, but but the the mom, the mom is the mom and the dad is the ones that they're using him. Yeah. That they're, sucks. They're, I, think, I think they made laws because of shit like that. I think they made laws where they have the parents can only take like twenty five percent or something. I I remember something like this coming out. Yeah. But they're, they 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 have they ha they had the son, the kid uh, Ryan, and they're they're like telling him do this do that do this. And they're recording him. Here's your script, buddy. He's not even eighteen years old. <laughs> like is that even is that, is, is that even legal? Like I, you're 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 really like. Um, using your kid taking advantage of your That's kid to make money labor shit huh i mean i don't want to say bad words here because you know people get offended so easily but they're really taking advantage of the kid yeah like imagine like you're you have your kid and you're putting them to work it's like slavery you're like hey do this do that uh put this clothes on open this toy go over there go to that corner they're they're using the kid to make money millions of dollars too like, you think you think that's fine? Hell no, I don't think that's fine. No, that's messed up, man. The poor, these like these poor kids, and and imagine, you know, so many of these child stars from when we were kids, Macaulay Culkin, these people, they fall into terrible lives, man. Drug because they're handed life on a silver platter. They they don't know what it, they don't know struggle. They don't know anything, so they end up having a bad care. I mean, dude, struggle is what builds a man. Yeah, you know, struggle is important for our development. We have to get our ass handed to us all the time throughout our lives. That's how we become stronger. You know, yeah. we sharpen by iron or you know by fire, right? 
Um, and these kids will never experience that. They're gonna experience wealth from fucking TikTok videos or something, no real work ethic of any kind. They're probably gonna fall into drugs and a shitty relationship and they're gonna yeah. have no concept yeah. of anything. So I feel bad for them, you know? Like they're kind of victims of their own success. Yeah. So let's do the, the rev share, let's do mortgage, real estate, Done. escrows, we'll do that. And then um, if, so for the, the leads that you get, the leads that you get that, that you run ads for, mm -hmm. like what kind of ads and how do you run those ads? So we, we'll always test things to the nth degree, brother. We test every, I mean, for example, we started running ads for, um, for legal, for, uh, for, <laughs> for ride share abuse, right? People who were assaulted by Uber drivers. We started running these ads, right? And, and selling those to law firms. I mean, some people get raped by, by Uber drivers. One of our leads actually, you know, I don't want to break any privacy laws, but they, we've experienced very similar things. Like, with our leads. like if you're, if, if you're a good looking girl, like a hot girl out there, and you're wearing little skirts and showing off, and you're going to this party and you're thinking, I'm gonna get an Uber because I'm gonna, I, I don't wanna drink and drive. So you don't wanna get a DUI, but then you end up getting drunk at the party. Yep. And then you get an Uber, and then the Uber takes advantage. And it's happened, Google it. Like how many, how many girls have been raped? And it could be both guys or girls, but I mean, girls I think lead the way. And like, if you Google it, I'll be curious to see how many uh, girls have been abused by Uber drivers. So you're not, you're taking an Uber because you do not want to get a DUI, but now you're risking yourself of the Uber driver taking advantage of you. Yeah. So like, like how scary is that? And then, and then every, every, everything is tracked anyway. So like the Uber driver, the apps, but then they turn off the app, right? And, and like, it's just scary how the world is, but, but like, like uh, you, you're probably getting a bunch of leads like for, for that, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's. I'm kind of curious. It, I mean, let me look. It's it up. a tragedy, man. Yeah. I mean, there, there's tens of thousands of people who have been assaulted or, or you know, sexual things with the, by their Uber drivers, and so I. Some of the products I sell, <coughs> I, I'm really happy to do it because I feel like we're helping people. You know, like some of these poor, you know, guys and girls. You know, they get beat up or whatever by an Uber driver. And um, you look, know. Look, look, check this out. The total number of reported incidents in the United States is alarming. Breakdowns by, by year show flu fluctuations, highlighting the ongoing nature of this issue. There were 3,824 reports of sexual assault uh, from 2019 to 2020. So this is it, it's, it's probably a lot worse now. Yeah. But it just gives you it just gives you like a like an idea from 2017 to 2018 107 deaths my god like it makes me not want to take uber like i i'd rather get a dui than take an uber and get <laughs> raped or or get killed like it's it's not even safe and and so like it's it's crazy it's, it's crazy but but you're getting so you're getting data and and you're so you're running ads what kind of ads do you run to, for for lawyers well, so um, right now we're doing uh, we're doing immigration. Um, we're doing uh, that's a big uh, industry right there. We're doing ride share abuse, which is uh, you know uh, Uber and things like that. And then we're also running um, what's the other one? We're starting to not mesothelioma. We were gonna we were looking at that one, but um, the other one is it's it sounds funny, but it's a real thing. Is Mormon abuse. What? This is a real thing, yeah. Mormon people f getting abused by you know either other Mormons or they're getting mistreated because they're Mormon, maybe like religiously. So that one's big. That's surprise. I know it sounds like a very niche one, but it's actually surprisingly big. Yeah. What about Scientology? I haven't run that one yet. <laughs> I think <clears throat> those people will make me disappear. <laughs> you don't Mormon. mess with certain people. Yeah, Mormon. Uh, percentage in the U.S. is 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 Mormons one of the biggest ones? It is, yeah. Well, no, 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 no. It's not one of the biggest ones. I think rideshare abuse is a big one right now. No, I'm talking about about um about uh religion. Oh, no, I don't I don't know the percentages. Mormons, yeah. But in certain areas, you can run the ads in certain areas where they're more predominant. Scientology could be a good one for you. Get some leads. <laughs> I, I'm not sure. I haven't tried running it. I have to see what percentage of the population is Scientologist. 
I mean, if, if Tom, yeah, and then, but then again, if I get Tom Cruise, then I mean, I'm set, right? And that's a big mm -hmm. client. But the and, and I'm not, not nothing bad against Scientology, by the way. Like I like I like Scientology. I like Christ Christianity. Uh, everybody has their their religion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not, Mormons. Not. But but uh, so that's just it's very interesting how you get your leads now. But you went from being good in sales to making good money to being like, there's more money in marketing. So for marketing, you're going to get into new industries. Is that is that kind of the plan? And yeah. how, how big do you want to get? I mean, the idea behind Call Drive is we buy calls, we sell calls to everybody and anybody. Anybody who can produce calls, I want to buy them. Anybody who can buy calls, I want to sell to them. So I want to not only be the best marketer, but also have that network of all the other best marketers yeah. all in one place. So let's say let's say I'm I'm the mortgage guy, I'm Albert, and and you're gonna sell me a uh, mortgage, or you're gonna we're gonna do rev share for mortgage leads. Mm -hmm. So how does it look like? So <clears throat> So you, you get the lead on the phone and then you connect me on the phone with the mortgage lead or what, what's, how, how does it yeah. look like? What I would do is I would ask you how many sales reps do you have? And I have, I have like, like 50. Okay, perfect. So I would say, okay, so you have 50 reps. Then my job then is to keep all 50 of them on the phone all day. That's my job. I'm going to drive calls that way they never stop pitching the entire time. Now, if you have other marketing channels, maybe I only occupy 40 of them so that the other 10 can handle your other marketing. But that's what I try to do is I ask them, how many reps do you have? And I go, how much per day do you want them on the phone? And if they say all day, and I go, careful what you wish for, bro, because I'll do it, you know? So, um, and I'll try to keep them at like 40, 50 CCs, concurrent calls all day. Now it can be really expensive depending on the product, but if they're making enough money, it's a win. Like how expensive could it be? I mean, I have I have clients pay me half a million, a million a month. So, uh, or my biggest client, uh, my biggest client actually pays me about half a million a month. So, um, you know, it, it can get, it can be quite a bit. And how much are they closing though? I mean, they're closing millions of dollars, millions. So, what if you have uh, uh, bad uh, salespeople? Then, <laughs> then, <laughs> then, then you're gonna pay per lead, buddy. <laughs> uh, is I'll do a revenue share with my bigger clients once we have that deep relationship, because I want to put my money where my mouth is. I want to deliver to them, and I get a percentage of their closings. So we both win, right? Um, but then again, if they suck at closing, then, then I want to charge also, them also, per lead. They're instead. also making you lose money. If, Exa if that, that's why a rev share can be really dangerous for people like me. Yeah. Because if they have shitty salespeople or if they don't work the leads properly, we can easily. I, I've lost a lot of money um, learning that lesson too. Is sending thousands of leads somebody on a rev share and their closers just suck. And if your closers suck, don't bother buying leads. You know, you need to figure out how to fix that before you go into marketing. You know, even though I think marketing is more important than sales, your sales have to be lock in point dialed in before yeah. you can realistically consider taking a significant amount of marketing. Yeah. If you're going to take heavy marketing, you got to have some fucking killers ready to go for it. Yeah. So if anybody's watching this, you guys want to reach out, you guys want to uh, just uh, get a bunch of leads and make a lot of money. Then you guys have to hire my my friend here, Sack. He's gonna take care of you, the Call King. That 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 uh th that gives it a gives it all. Like that 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 says it all. The Call King. So you're the king of getting them the calls. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I do. And anything anything you want to share with uh, the audience before we we end this? Any any last minute thoughts? Yeah, you guys need to attend the Driven event. This shit's badass. You're gonna learn a lot. So we'll see you there if you guys make it. And I'm going to put all your information below. Then people will just reach out and get some leads. Thank you, buddy. Thank you for your time, brother. Appreciate it, man. Yeah. We done?